specific function uh, but uh, which can contribute on whether the cell state will keep the information from previous cell as is or if it will reduce or remove an irrelevant information from the cell state or will it add any new information to the cell state in the sequence. So the flow channel, uh, which is the transporting channel is highlighted over here in this uh, diagram. It links the previous uh, LSTM cell and the next LSTM cell in the sequence. And as it passes through, it interacts with the forget gate to remove any irrelevant information and keep relevant information from previous cell state and with input gate to add any new relevant information from the current cell before it feeds this to the next cell uh, as well as to the output gate to be available for processing in the current cell. Thus, it transports relevant information from the beginning to the end of the sequence and make it available at each step for processing. So the snapshot of the state of the cell. <clears throat> so the we were discussing that the cell state is a transportation channel which uh, 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 transports information throughout the sequence. So the cell state can memorize the information in a cell at each time step. So no matter how early the information is in the sequence, each LSTM updates the cell state by removing any irrelevant information from the cell state and adding any new relevant or significant information from the inputs of the current cell. So this information is available at every point in each cell at the forget gate, at the input gate, at the output gate. So the memorized value of the, uh, of the relevant information of input sequence at a given point in the cell is called the snapshot of the state of a cell. So the cell state is different from the hidden state of the cell in the manner that the cell state snapshot is the relevant information from the input sequence that is made available throughout the sequence while the hidden state is the value generated by the activation function of the LSTM cell which uses the previous hidden state as well as the new inputs from the input sequence. <clears throat> Let's discuss the gates of the LSTM cell. So there are three gates, the forget gate, the input gate and the output gate uh, which are all connected in this LSTM cell and uh, which can be, uh, we are getting over here for uh, understanding all these gates separately. So all these gates basically are considered as a neural network in, the, in themselves, because uh, if you see the definition of a neural network, it is um, basically uh, uh, having some inputs and then there is an activation function in it and then it is generating an output and we can see that all these three gates, they have inputs as well as the activation function, and then they are also generating the output. So the forget gate generates a remember vector, which ranges between zero and one due to the sigmoid activation function, which uh, always provides a value between zero and one. <clears throat> the value zero will mean that all information from previous cell state is irrelevant and ensure it is removed from the cell state while the value one means that all the information from the previous cell state is relevant and is kept as is without reducing. So any, val any, va any values between zero and one uh, would uh, partially remove some of the inf irrelevant information from the previous cell state. And then the input gate basically decides what information from the input and previous hidden state is useful and should be added or saved in the current cell state. The 10H activation function modulates the input data between minus one and one. So the output of the input, uh, the output of the input gate is called the save vector, which represents useful or significant information from the inputs that will be added to the new current cell state. <clears throat> so the output gate is a. Uh, actually the compute gate for the LSTM cell, it decides what information from the input and the new current cell state should be used to generate the hidden state of the current LSTM cell. So each gate is getting inputs pre, uh, pre, uh, previous hidden state and uh, current cell input. They have activation function, which is trained to learn the process, the input, and then in an, generate an output. So as we can see that each gate in LSTM cell is actually uh, behaving as a neural network and are connected together to collectively achieve the goal of the LSTM cell. So similarities and differences in a cell state uh, 
and in LSTM cell and the hidden state in simple RNA. Sim cell state in LSTM and hidden state in simple RNA both serve as memory for previous cells in the sequence. The difference is that the hidden state is based off of the output of the adjacent previous cell only, while the cell state can comprise of all the relevant and significant information from all previous cells in the sequence. Another difference is that the hidden state is the process output of the previous cell, which a cell state can be, un uh, while a cell state can be unaltered, unreduced input from the beginning of the input sequence. <clears throat> So the next part is to create an LSTM with a time series data. And for this, uh, I will be using the data set that I discussed up in part one. And uh, <coughs> so the files attached for this uh, part is the two data set files, then the, the Python and Jupyter notebook and uh, the PDF uh, printout of the output. <clears throat> so to predict values for maximum temperatures, uh, sequential data, uh, we are creating an LSTM uh, RNN RN neural network model. So in this model, we will have six layers, uh, which you can see in this diagram over here. So we will have three LSTM layers and two dropout layers in between each LSTM layer. The last layer consists of a fully connected dense layer. So each LSTM layer has 50 LSTM neurons and the dropout layer is configured with 0.2, which is uh, equivalent to dropping 20% of the outputs before they go to the next layer. In the model, uh, I'm also uh, set, setting the length of the input sequence at 60 historical data points to predict the next one to generate the time series input. And the batch size here we have is set as 32. And I will be using uh, Adam optimizer and mean squared error as the loss function to compile the model. And here 90% uh, of the data is being used as the training data and 10% of the data will be used to test uh, uh, as the test data. And I will use 100 epochs to train the model and 100 epochs to train the forecasting model also. <clears throat> so I downloaded the two data sets from the website, uh, which I mentioned in part one. And uh, I'm, I'm going to use the first uh, file for training and testing and evaluating the uh, model and the second file I will be I will be using uh, to basically forecast data and then compare uh, use it as actuals versus uh, to compare with actual versus uh, forecasted data. So the one feature that we we'll, we will be predicting is the Tmax, which is the maximum air temperature on a specific day, and uh, we have the time series from January first to June thirtieth. And uh, actually, if we see uh, here, I have plotted the actual data set. And just for fun, uh, there was a huge uh, winter storm around February time frame. We can see the dip over here. <clears throat> so I've split the data set between training and test. 90% is training, 10% is test. After that, I'm using the min max scalar to perform the normalization to scale the data between the range of zero and one. And then I'm using it to normalize the training and as well as test data sets. After that, uh, I'm creating 60 historical uh, data points to, I mean, time series generator with 60 historical data points. And I'm keeping the batch size to 32 samples per batch. And then basically I'm creating the LSTM RN model as I define, as I described earlier. Uh, each uh, LSTM layer has 50 LSTM cells. Uh, activation function for all the LSTM layer, uh, LSTM cells is RELU. And uh, <coughs> the first two layers uh, have return sequences to true, but the last one is not because it is going uh, to the uh, dense layer. Dropout layer have 0.2 dropout factor, which drops 20% of the output. So the feature that we are trying to predict is Tmax. After that, I'm using the uh, item optimizer and mean square as the loss function 
to compile the model and after that uh, use 100 epochs to uh, train the model and 100 epochs to train the forecasting model so here uh, i'm uh, showing you the plot uh, uh, of the loss function which is like the loss function drops sharply and then it stays stable all the way and then 